back to the beginning. The, the beginning. very beginning. Even before you were born, because your parents, your mum was 16 and your dad like 22. Yeah. When they moved here from New Zealand. Dad. Was it so? <laughs> she was 17. Oh, was she 17? Yeah. Daddy. <laughs> so how did, what, how, that's so young. What was? Yeah, well, they lived in a small country town in New Zealand and I don't know, maybe small country towns, that's what happens. They worked together. Right. Um, mum, I think mum left school quite early and they worked together at a printer's or at the local paper, oh. something like that, and, um, and fell in love and then moved to Perth. And that's where you were born as well? Yeah. Because yeah. you lived in like a little a town outside of Perth. Yeah, like three so it was three hours, hours north of Perth, a little town called Lehman. Right. Um, and it was a crayfishing town. So I guess half the people that lived there were crayfishermen and half the people that lived there were miners. They worked in, in this little place called Eniaba, a mineral sands mine. Right. Um, so all these Kiwis moved over in the mining boom of the late 70s, early 80s. So dad right. moved and then mum followed suit. Because your so, mum's, ha- I never know how to say it properly. Is it Mari or Maori? Got to roll the R so it's mouldy. Mouldy. Almost like mouldy, like think mouldy cheese. Mouldy cheese. Every time <laughs> I look at you, I think mouldy. But I, <laughs> I always feel like an idiot saying it because in Australia people say Maori like if yeah. you heard someone say something on the news it would be of Maori descent yeah but when I go over there and I say that all the Kiwis look at me like I'm an idiot and they're like Maori it's right. Maori yeah you've got to say it right because you are because I am Maori yeah I'm Maori yes <laughs> so yeah there you go but no one in my entire life has ever guessed that that's my heritage no people say what are you are you I've, I've had like Italian Asian, Middle Eastern, Indian, I've had everything. Yeah, because you know what, you've got that look that you could be anything. Because my dad, I've got my dad's nose which throws everyone because right. Maldives traditionally have the wider nose, like yes. my mum. Yes, But I've got my dad's smaller, more pinched in nose, but yeah. the, the other Maldi features. So I'm a bit of a weird one. That's why I think people don't know where you are from. And I think Maldives are traditionally really big and strong and <laughs> yeah, me and my big yeah, muscles. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you're huge. <laughs> So that throws people as well. I'm, I'm, I'm too fine to be a mouldy. Yeah, right. So, and I don't, eat, I don't know where that comes from because my dad's not fine. And but, but your mum's your mum is, yeah. So mum's mum, who's not mouldy. She's tall and skinny. So yeah. Yeah, okay. right. And yeah. so you were. How, what's the age gap between you and your sister Kate? Um, two and a half, two and a bit years. And you're the yeah. older sister. Yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah. So you were four, and so Kate would have been like one and a half when your folks split up, or she would have been yeah, tiny. About that. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. memories from, from that time? Um, I just remember mum leaving with my sister and I just remember my dad being really, really sad. Oh. So I've always had a little soft spot for my dad. Yeah, yeah. Because I, as one of your earliest memories yeah. is your dad crying, I think. I know. Like men don't I cry. Too. I know. You know. So seeing dad cry was really sad. So that's kind of stuck with me. Yeah. Um, but that was it. So I stayed with dad in Lehman and mum moved up to the city, up to Perth or down to Perth with my sister. Um, and so did you, oh, yeah. did you, how old were you when you, did you go and eventually live with your mum or? Yeah, because they, there was like custody, um, I think they had to go to court, but all very amicable and they're, they're friends. Yeah, I know. But I think, you know, dad obviously wanted us to live with him and mum obviously wanted us to live with her. Um, so they let a court work it out and we lived with mum. So um, I kind of remember, I remember we went to Hungry Jack's after the court. Wow, isn't it funny? And then we went Hungry Jacks and had dinner. Yeah, but I just remember feeling really sad for my dad. Yes, one of my earliest memories is my parents sitting me down. I would have been a similar age to you, Mm. and them saying, "You know, we're going to split up." And Mm. my and I remember going, "Hold hands." You could hold hands because I thought if they held oh. hands, it would make everything okay. Oh, that's so sweet. But I, st- I do remember, like, it's so confronting as a child to see your dad cry. My dad yeah. cries all the time now. As he gets older, he's a big softie. Don't so is mine. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. But it was yeah. very confronting back when you're younger going, yeah. it's when your parents become human almost when something yeah. like that happens and you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. you've got feelings. Yeah. And it's weird. It is weird. It is very weird. Yeah. yeah. I remember I cried. Um in front of Oscar and Billy for the first time. Oh. And they both walked up to me and they were like, what? Oh. And I was kind of trying to turn away from them and they were following me around. Yeah. Just like, whoa. Yes. And I couldn't talk because I was in that, it was after I'd had the twins when your hormones come in and you just yeah. cry over 
you don't even know. No, you, you just can't stop crying. Yeah. And I couldn't stop. And so all these tears coming down. Mm. And Oscar's like, Mom, what happened? What happened? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> And my husband goes, you know, he's he's so funny. Um, mummy's, mummy's just had um, gone through a very big life experience and she's had the baby. It's a very, very big thing for a lady to do. And, and um, I can't even remember if he said hormones or, or he said, you know, it just takes the body a long while to adjust. So she's, mummy's, she's not sad. She's just having a little cry and she can't help it, but Aww. she's happy. And they're like, oh, okay, she's happy. And off they toddled. Oh, cute. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Yeah. yeah. And they were just, um, it's something that I don't think Oscar Billy would have forgotten by now. Yeah. But I think that will stick with Oscar for a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he's but at that age. They do. Yeah. You're, and, and you know what I always think too, because our boys are the same age, mm. and it's around five is when your memories click in mm. and you start to live your life out from mm. those from kind of... From that point of, on. Oh, my God. And I say to Sam all the time, how are we going to fuck him? Yeah. Like, what are we going to do or say or what's somebody going to yeah. say now that's going to make him go, okay, I'm not safe here or oh, I shouldn't do that again. Yeah. Or, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah, because now is the time. I know. You've got to be so careful with everything, don't I know. You? It's yeah. also like when... Because I don't, I don't... I think once I've cried in front of the boys, I forget what it was, and I remember saying to Baxi, I'm a bit sad and... But I also go, you know, they probably should see us, but then I don't know too. You, I always go, ah, oh, this is normal. They should see that I am like mm. this, but then also I don't want them to feel that yet. Yeah. Depends what it's for, I guess. Yeah. yeah. At least that memory is Oscar will remember, oh, mum was because you just had the twins. She had a baby and it was a really big event yeah. and, and sometimes ladies cry after they have their babies for no yeah. reason. Oh, my yeah. God, I know. Yeah, gosh, it was... I remember I was crying. I think Oscar beat me in Snakes and Ladders and I cried. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. I was like, <laughs> he looked at me like, fuck, Mum. <laughs> What's, What's wrong with so you? Funny. What's wrong? Um, and then I remember I just I kept going in and seeing the twins in the special care nursery. After I'd been discharged, they had to stay in for another five days. Right. And, um, was that because they remember, were preemie? Yeah, right. yeah. They just weren't quite ready. I think Tom was ready, but Darcy, they were feeding and everything was fine, but Darcy was still a little bit cool. Right. So we had a little electric blanket mm. and whenever they tried to wean him off his electric blanket, he'd drop his temperature oh a little God. bit because he got a little bit cold because he was so skinny. Um, so then they had to put the electric blanket back in. So, um, oh. so that's what held them up in there. Um, and I just remember driving home from the hospital one day and I just, I felt, because of the hormones, I felt quite panicky in the car. Like I felt anxious. Mm. I didn't want to be on the road because I wasn't, at home with Oscar and Billy, but I wasn't with my babies in the yeah, hospital and I felt right. um, vulnerable on the road. It's weird. It's just yeah. one of those things that the hormones make I you irrational. It's weird though. It makes and sense. so I'm driving and we kept getting red lights and I was, just wanted to get home. And then it's a green light, we're going. I'm like, just go, go, go. And then it turned red and I just went, oh, <laughs> I just started no. crying. And Chris is like, well, man, I'm like, I know, I'm crying because oh. we got a red light. I know that the hormones are. Hormones on. are the craziest. Thing aren't they ever yeah ever it would feel so strange going home without your babies especially mm. because you went home with your older two yeah what was that like when you did have those those five days where you would have to go and visit your babies um you know I didn't mind because I knew that they were safer in hospital getting looked after monitored um and kept really warm um because they weren't quite ready to come home. So I, was, I, I didn't mind that they were in hospital. It also yeah. gave me a, time, a chance to um, recover from the Caesar. Like yeah. Caesars are quite rough and um, especially a caesarean, a caesarean multiples. Yeah. And I was, I was so sore. Like I remember in that hospital, I was getting pushed around in a um, wheelchair for about five days. There were times yeah. where I thought, I feel great. And I'd walk down to the special care nursery. Then by the time I got there, I thought, what have I done? Wow. Like I exhausted myself and I couldn't walk back to my room after I'd fed them. Wow. I needed to get pushed in a wheelchair. So I was just, um, I just kept overdoing it. And it was yeah. like one step forward, two steps back kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, so I was, I, I didn't mind that they were there because I knew that they were in the best place for them. Then it was perfect timing. By the time they were ready to come home, I was physically ready to You're care for them. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so it, yeah, it was kind of good timing in the end. So yeah, it was it was weird leaving without them. I was happy to um, to be with Oscar and Billy though. Yeah, and yeah. it'd almost be. I mean, I think if it was your first baby too, it oh, would be a, 
probably harder. And that is so in such an important point. If that had been my first, I would have been absolutely traumatised. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to have left. I would have no. booked an Airbnb or something across the room, yeah. uh, across the road from the hospital. There's no way I, I could no. have left them. No. Yeah, but yeah, I think because I was my third and fourth, I, I just got it and I, yeah. I knew that they were in a better place for them at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. right. Let's yeah. go back to when you started modelling. How did yeah. that come about? Um, did you get spotted on the streets of Perth or something? <laughs> Not quite. So I was, my sister actually sent a photo of myself in my Pizza Haven uniform. So I used to oh, work funny. for Pizza Haven. So I used to work on the make bench. I was the fastest pizza maker. No way. In Thornley. Do you know what? It's the best job I've ever had. Is <laughs> it really? Yeah. That's hurtful considering yeah, we work no. together now. <laughs> you prefer putting pineapple on a pizza. Ah, it was <laughs> so much fun. Do you know what? I think it was just that it was more around that time. It was the freedom of earning money. Oh, and, yeah, and yeah. being outside of school people and netball people. These were my new people. Yeah, I was 16 yeah. and um, I had a job and I could buy things and, yeah. um, you know, it wasn't a stressful yeah, job. Is. So no stresses yeah. involved. Freedom, I was just making it? pizzas and I was bloody good at it and fast. And look, it wasn't the best job. But at the time, I thought it was pretty special. Um, and so my, there was a photo of me in my Pizza Haven uniform, which was black pants, Blue polo, red collar, and a cap. Oh. My sister sent it into was it Dolly oh, magazine? Yes. Like you know those model cults? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sent that off, and um, I didn't know. And then I got something in the mail saying you've been selected as a finalist. So go down to Garden City Shopping Centre in Burragoon. Um, oh my god! And and yeah. Go in the final. I didn't win, but I got scouted there by Vivian's. Yeah, oh. all the modelling agencies were there. But oh, I was wow. very, yeah, very gangly, you know, spotty skin, crooked teeth. Um, and I went into Vivian's and they said, um, it's really important that you finish school. Right. You need to get your teeth fixed and just get a bit more kind of life experience. And then right. while I was um, finishing high school and I had my braces, Vivians would run workshops, which was so, so good. Right. So all their young girls who were, I guess they'd say, in, in training or in development, who, who weren't proper models yet, um, hadn't done their photo shoot and couldn't be booked for jobs, right. they had this um, development program where they would teach us um, all sorts of the, everything about the modelling industry from how to be professional um, at castings and what would happen when you get booked for a job, how to work with certain people, dangers, right. how to walk, how to pose, just how to conduct yourself. And right. it was so good. The lady that took it, Christine Fox, she's still the manager at Vivian's in Perth. Right. And she has um, started the careers of so many um, models, um, presenters, actresses, uh, in Australia, and she's amazing, and she everyone calls her Mama Fox because she's almost right, like a mother beautiful. figure, yeah. and she is awesome and just prepares you because the modelling industry can be pretty rough, yeah. And a lot of it, well, most of it is when you're not getting booked for the job, you are being rejected, yes, for, on how you look. It's so full as a 16, on. 17 year yeah. old, that's pretty full on, yes. but I feel like she really prepares everyone, and I think right. that's why. Vivian's Perth girls always do so well. Um, she discovered Gemma Ward, Jessica Gomes, Nicole Trumpfio, all right. of those girls, wow. and trained them. Right. And they've all gone on to have amazing careers, and it was under her um, teaching and education. Yeah. And um, she's, she's incredible. Really because awesome. you, when you you're right, like you're either working or you're getting rejected from jobs when that is your yeah. job. Yeah. Did you have any times where you did feel shit about yourself and about the way you looked and stuff for losing out on jobs, mm. or not really? I don't think uh, not really, and I think because we were so well prepared and yeah. we were always taught not to take it personally. So they she kind of gave scenarios like you're going to go to a casting and they might cast thirty girls. And they want brunette brown eyes. Mm. So you rock up to this casting and there's 30 or 29 other girls and they all look exactly like you. Yeah. So you kind of look around and you go, oh, there's, you know, Buckley's chance I'm going to get this. Right. And everyone there is gorgeous. So it's yeah. kind of, it's a lot of it's just luck. Yeah. So you're kind of prepared not to get it and yeah, that's right. okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then 
the odd chance when you did get it, it was like, how cool is this? Yeah. But everyone there was gorgeous, gorgeous girls. So that's um, a good headspace though, because I can see how it would turn you crazy when yeah, you, when you are being judged yeah, on your looks. Exactly. Um, but I feel because I was prepared from such a young age to be judged on my looks, I feel like it's um, prepared me for the life that I've ended up yeah. taking. Like I've got a thick skin. I'm not easily hurt. Yeah, I um, I can brush things off yeah. very easily. Yeah, you can. I don't take yeah. offence mm. um, to a lot of things, um, and I think it's because of my modelling background. Yeah, where you're kind of used to being rejected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, school? What was school like? I didn't go to the local high school. Mum didn't want me to go there because it was a little bit rough. Right, um, right, right. So I went to another. Um, high school still a public high school we were quite poor we could never afford a private school mm. um and um i went to a great public high school and i used to catch the bus two buses to school two buses home so 20 buses a week every oh, week God, yeah to get there and to get back and then yeah. eventually we moved up to that area right um by year 10 i think we'd moved into the area where my high school was and yeah high school was great never had a boyfriend didn't uh, you never 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 had a boyfriend well, chris is your first proper boyfriend first proper right? boyfriend yeah why did my you, one why? true love was it because you were i like, didn't like any boys in my year and i don't think any of the boys liked me so wow <laughs> that's yeah, a it. and mum actually said to me in year 12 one day because i was you know quite you know, tall, gangly, braces by then, no boobs. I wasn't really the, the girl that the guys would ever go for. Right. Um, whereas my sister, on the other hand, had the blonde hair, the 10 double Ds, the small little Did waist. She, what a bitch. bitch. Yeah. Like, babe, like super, super babes. Everyone went for my sister and boys would call her all the time when we get home. And mum said to me one day, this is before mobile phones, cause, so mum could see like, Yes, yes, calls. yes. Why don't boys ever call you? Boys always call Kate. Um, do you not like boys? Because that's okay if you like girls. That's totally okay. And I was like, no, I do like boys. I just don't like any boys at my school and none of the boys like me. And that's just how it was. Yeah. Wow. And then I think I got, um, had a boyfriend. I used to kiss boys every now and again, but not a proper boyfriend. Kind of got a little bit of a boyfriend just after school. And then I went away and modelled. Yeah. So I broke up with him hung out with the boy a little bit when I was living in Thailand and then um, met Chris on one of my trips home between modelling and between uni. Um, met him at the pub and like instant. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I was, was I 19? Yeah, At the right. Cottesloe, on the, at the Cot Sunday session. Many good hookup stories um, centred around the Cot and oh, then getting funny. the double-decker bus to Clubber. Right. Club Bayview afterwards. How funny. Yes, just, it was just epic during that time. Was he Perth. playing footy at that time? he just started. So did yeah. you, because you've always been a footy fan and I love yeah. that you, you, I've not met a chick who is more into footy. Really? I love it though because <laughs> it's, you know, everything about it and it's a yeah. passion for I love sport. it. I love sport. Yeah. I love test cricket. Did you know? That's yeah. so <laughs> fucked up. That is seriously so boring. I love test cricket. I <gasps> sit there and watch five days of cricket You are like the, the ultimate match. woman. You really are. I say are. to my husband, you are so lucky. He's so <laughs> lucky. But you <laughs> loved it before you met yeah, Chris. So did yeah. you know who he was when you did no, meet him? No, because I'd been living overseas. Right. So it was back um, with... I think where I, I think I'd been to Hong Kong and I was back for a few weeks and I met up with one of my girlfriends and we went to the cot and she'd been kissing one of Chris's friends. Right. And, um, but they weren't together or anything. And then Chris was with him at the cot that day. And she was like, Oh, there's this guy I've been kissing. Um, let's go say hi. So we went over and, and then, yeah, I met Chris and kind of, that was yeah. it. Yeah. So did you, because you were living overseas at that time. Mm. So did you, is that when you decided, okay, I'm going to move back now? Yeah. Pretty wow. much. Yeah. It was, it was kind of instant. I don't know if it was for him, but it was for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's I think cool, I did maybe one more trip. And then also, um, I got your, what do they call it here? Your VCE score. So in Perth, it's called your TER or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it only lasts for five years before you lose it. And I got a good oh. score. So I wanted to use it and I was kind of 
uh, at the last point where I could use it before it expired. Right. So I thought, oh, I better use this to get into the uni course that I want to get into. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll have to go and do more tests and exams just to go to uni. Right. So um, that was also one of the factors where I thought, oh, I've got to better get my life together. Yeah, yeah, Better go yeah. to uni. Yeah. Get a degree. Do something with my life. Yeah. Um, so, and then that coincided with me meeting Chris right. and falling madly in love with him. Isn't that the best? Don't you love remembering that? Yeah. I love remembering when I first met Sam. And I yeah. was the same. I saw, and Sam had a girlfriend and nothing happened. So did but Chris. I, <gasps> did he? he had a girlfriend. But did you love him before, like they even, but I remember, this is so psycho, that I saw Sam out at a nightclub once with his girlfriend and in my head I said, that's going to be me leaving with him one day. Like I loved him from the second I saw him. That's why I believe in love at first sight because I'm like, I fell so in and love with him. And how did he, the girlfriend? Well, they ended up just breaking up and yeah. he didn't really know who I was. And then we got together like two weeks after they broke up. So yeah. he was still heartbroken after over On this On the girl. rebound? I was so the rebound girl and he didn't stop talking about the fucking ex-girlfriend oh, for how long like six weeks and I remember saying to my one of my friends I'm like he didn't talk about it today we're getting we're having progress <laughs> but then we broke up how a couple of times that? Mm, 13 years ago wow but, but we did have breakups nice. about 2003 two? yeah 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 which feels yeah. like it does feel like a lifetime ago yeah. does it feel like it wasn't you I often say to Sam I'm like those kids don't feel like they were us now I know yeah it feel it feels like that we were different then yes I don't I don't know how to even explain or articulate how but we just were, we were just kids we were kids and yeah. I look back at photos it was so fresh faced you had so much hair and I had no eyebrows oh, yeah. <laughs> and you just couldn't keep your hands off each yeah. other I was talking yeah. about that today with um, some girlfriends and I was like it's such a shame that that doesn't lie like it is natural it's human nature yeah. that after like 12 to 24 months that like just oh my god I need to touch you just yeah. fades and develops yeah. into something else. I remember else. every night in bed we'd just have to be spooning. Like, yes! Touch. Whereas now if I even even if there's like a toe or something I'm like Ugh. oh no <laughs> Ugh. get away I can't sleep you're touching me. <laughs> oh my god it's <laughs> so funny. Like, yes. you are totally you're totally interrupting my sleep. Yes. Get over your do. side of the bed. If you feel one of them. Them. Nah, just kidding. But, but sa- sometimes I'll feel Sam's foot and we like, just retreat. <laughs> it's like, no, don't touch. Oh, my God, but you couldn't fall asleep without them touching I know, we just be touching. Yeah, oh, which is so nice. Isn't it? But now I just love my sleep too much. Whereas back then I didn't care. No, you it's didn't like, care. I'm just happy to be uncomfortable, like, under your arm with my oh. neck like this <laughs> all night because I am so in love. <laughs> I wish we could have. I wish it was like every five years you got a year of that again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because so part of me goes, oh, I'm never going to feel that again. I know. It's pretty it's full sad. on, isn't it? Yeah. Could you recreate that? Could you? What's? Yeah. No. I don't know if you can with the same person. Yeah. I don't know. Not with so the same So I'm going to break up with Sam just to get that feeling. Again. No, just. But it is. It's you just kind of go. Oh, those feelings of mm. just. And I feel like the older you get the more of a distant memory it becomes. And you yeah. try and remember it and remember what it was like and the memories are getting, you know, dimmer. Because imagine flirting with him now, how embarrassing. Like I, I wouldn't even know how to no. flirt or meet or date or... No. It's so different. There's Tinder and there's some things, some fish thing, some fish in the sea thing. Yeah, and yeah, what is that? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I say, I'm like Sam, even if we're miserable, we are not ever breaking mm. up. I cannot, I don't know. I'm the worst at like chit-chatting with people. Yeah. I would be single forever. No, that, you are not. You're I? the best chit-chatter of all time. No, you I'm just, not. You're like the professional chit-chatter. If there was yeah, an I Oscar for chit-chatting, you would win it. Yeah, but that's normally girls. in front of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. not yes. boys you like. So what do you like with boys you like? You all well, I can't like even quite... remember. Yeah. I would not have any idea what to talk to them about or... Oh, I'd be the yeah. I'd be the pits. There's yeah. no way. I remember whenever I liked a boy, I would just ignore them. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I remember, um, like, so Chris, I met Chris and then he was, ended up having his girlfriend and he was with his girlfriend and I was like, eh, okay, see you later. And then we ended up coming back together. And he said, oh, why don't you come over one night? And I was like playing it cool, like, oh, I don't know, um, I might go and see my girlfriends or like try to play it cool. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, okay. And then he went to hang up and I thought, oh, far out, you can't keep pushing boys away because you're shy. Yeah. Oh, so then I was yeah. like, oh, actually, no, okay, I'm coming over now. Bye. And I've never oh. done that before. And then I went over and then that was, that was, the beginning, beginning of, of everything. Mm. So yeah. Well, that's it's like so I had cute. this moment where it's like you're gonna fuck this up. Yeah. He's asking you over, and you've been trying to play cool. Like, don't play hard to get because it doesn't work. Mm.